personal finance PowerPoint presentation diversification. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Most of this information can be found at Investopedia Diversification, which you can find online. Take a look at the references, resources, continue your research from there. This by Troy Siegel, updated April 21st, 2021. In prior presentations, we've been taking a look at investment goals, investment strategies, investment tools, and keeping those in mind, we're now considering what is diversification? Diversification is a risk management strategy that mixes a wide variety of investments within a portfolio. So we've all probably heard the term uh, diversification. If we watch stock market channels, for example, they'll probably come up with all different kinds of words that basically mean the same thing as diversification because it is so central to most of our planning strategies for our investment goals and strategies in part used to mitigate risk while also hopefully attempting to receive the returns. As we think about our diversified portfolio, we will be considering our goals, our time horizon, our risk tolerance. A diversified portfolio contains a mix of distinct asset types and investment vehicles in an attempt to limit uh, exposure to any single asset or risk. So clearly the idea being that if one market goes down for one set of assets, then hopefully it will not for the other. So we have basically a hedge against them. Note that this seems like a very straightforward concept and we hear it so many times that we just, we think it's like automatic, yeah, diversification. But when it actually happens, when time actually passes and, and the markets uh, drop or something like that, we also, we often start to take actions that are not in coherence with the concept of diversification. So for example, if we see that equities have been doing quite well for a very long time and we see say that bonds have not been doing much at all for a very long time we often tend to want to then move into the equity so we can get a piece of those returns abandoning the concept of you know diversification and that gives us more exposures to a market dropping so note that these concepts although they're kind of mundane in that you've probably heard them quite often, there's still not things that many individual investors are able to do over the long term. As market conditions change, we tend to deviate from the diversification. So we want to keep on drilling the core concepts, the, the fundamentals in our mind. So the rationale behind this technique is that a portfolio constructed of different kinds of assets will, on average, yield higher long term returns and lower the risk of any individual holding or security. So again, as time passes, you might be saying, hey, equities are doing great and I've got all this money that's over here in the bonds, right? What, what, what is going on here? If I just put it all into the equities, then I might be better or, or, or vice versa, just depending on the market conditions, if market conditions are going down. But then of course, whenever those market conditions change, which nobody really knows, no matter what, you know, they kind of, we hear on the, on the, the pundits saying, then we might not be positioned to deal with any kind of changes in the market. Whereas if you're diversified, you're basically saying, I know that I don't know. You've got the power of Socrates, right? Didn't he say, said something like, well, at least I know that I don't know what's going on. So I'm going to be diversified. So portfolio holdings can be diversified, not just across asset classes, but also within classes by investing in foreign markets as well as domestic markets. The idea is that the positive performance of one area of the portfolio will outweigh negative areas of another. And again, you might be saying, well, yeah, but I'm shooting myself in my, in my own foot because if I was weighted in the port or the portfolio that does well, I'd be making more money. But, but the problem is you don't know which one's going to do well forever. That's why you need the diversification, which hopefully is going to be the thing that saves you over the long term. So the basics of diversification, studies and mathematical models have shown that maintaining a well-diversified portfolio of 25 to 30 stock yields the most uh, cost-effective level of risk reduction. That investing in more securities generates further diversification benefits, albeit at drastically smaller rate. So then, I, so when you when you get into the idea of diversification, you might say, okay, how much diversification would be optimal? And you can think about what will give you the big benefits. And then, of course, you can tweak from that point forward, where you might have further gains, but the gains will not be as big as the gains uh, as the as the prior moves. Right? Diversification strives to smooth out 
unsystematic risk events in a portfolio so the positive performance of some investments neutralizes the negative performance of the others. So obviously if the market goes up for one thing, uh, the other thing might be going down. Or in other words, if there's a market crisis in one area, possibly the other area will hedge against it and not be exposed to that same problem. The benefits of diversification hold only if the securities in the portfolio are not perfectly uh, correlated. That is, they respond differently, often in opposite ways to market influences. So if you're invested in a whole bunch of things that are similar, they're integrated in nature, uh, and you can think about this as like a like different companies, right? If if you if one company goes down and they're integrated with the other company, possibly the other company supplying, like farming or something is supplying the restaurant or something like that, or the food producers or something, then of course those are highly correlated. And you would think that if there was a crisis, both of them could go down. Whereas if there's something that's opposite to that, then then that would be the hedge you want something that's not going to be the correlated item diversification by asset class fund managers and investors often diversify their investments across asset classes and determine what percentage of portfolio to allocate to each classes can include stocks shares of equity in a publicly traded company bonds, government and corporate fixed income debt instruments, real estate, land, building, natural resources, agriculture, livestock, water, mineral deposits, uh, exchange, trade funds, ETFs, marketable basket of securities that follow an index, commodity or sector, commodities, basic goods necessary for the production of other products, and then cash and short term cash equivalents. That's the treasury bills, certificates of deposits, money market vehicles, and other short-term low-risk investments. So they will then diversify among investments within the assets classes, such as selecting stocks from various sectors that tend to have low return correlation or by choosing stocks with different market capitalization. In the case of bonds, investors can select from investment grade, corporate bonds, U.S. Treasury bonds, stock and municipal bonds, high yield bonds, and others. So foreign diversification. Investors can reap further diversification benefits by investing in foreign securities because they tend to be less closely correlated with domestic ones. So then we can go outside to the foreign investing, which can be a little bit more difficult given the, given the structure of publicly traded companies and so on, for example. But it's becoming more and more doable, which is nice. So for example, uh, forces depressing the US economy may not affect Japan's economy in the same way. So note that more and more people have been arguing that it's a it's a global economy and we have been going more towards a global economy with these supply chains that actually run across the entire world and so on just in time kind of management strategies that are dependent upon those kind of things. But recently with the whole covid uh, pandemic, it looks like more and more people are decoupling a bit from that whole global supply chain concept, given the fact that they're seeing that the, the risk of, of a disruption in that supply chain can be quite costly. So, so at this point, you might see a little bit less of that and therefore exposure to other areas could be exposure that's not correlated more and more so. In any case, therefore, holding Japanese stocks gives an investor a small cushion of protection against losses during an Amer American economic uh, slowdown. Diversification and the uh, retail investor. So time and budget constraints can make it difficult for non-institutional investors, i.e. individuals, to create an adequately diversified portfolio. So everybody's heard this concept of diversification. Again, the question really comes into, well, how exactly do I diversify? You know, it seems like a very complex kind of structure. What, how can I basically simplify this and, and put a system in place that would be appropriate for my individual investments? So this challenge is a key reason why mutual funds are so popular with retail investors. Clearly, the concept of mutual funds that we've talked about in prior presentations, allowing us to pool money into a fund that then can be used to diversify in some way is a, a key component for most investors. Buying shares in a mutual fund offers an, an expensive way to diversify investments. 
while mutual funds provide diversification across various asset classes, exchange-traded funds, ETFs, afford investor access to narrow markets such as commodities and international plays that would ordinarily be difficult to access. An individual with a $100,000 portfolio can spread the investment among ETFs with no overlap. Disadvantages of diversification. So everything has its pros, it's got its cons. Uh, reduced risk, a volatility buffer. Uh, the pluses of diversification are many. However, there are drawbacks too. The more holdings a portfolio has, the more time consuming it can be to manage. So obviously, if this comes into, okay, how am I practically going to do this? If I'm going to diversify on my own using individual stocks, that's going to be quite time and uh, a lot of time taken up. If I use if I use mutual funds, that might be a little bit easier, but mutual funds can be can still be quite confusing depending on how I'm setting up the mutual funds. I might have a targeted mutual funds that basically does some of this diversification for me, which would be the, you know the most simplified kind of way to do it. And it really depends upon you know your level of sophisticity in investing and what your particular goals are and how much you want to be kind of participating and adjusting what is going on so and more uh, more expensive since buying and selling many different holdings incur more transaction fees and brokerage commissions so most people can't just buy and sell individual stocks because if they're paying a broker for those individual transactions it will be quite expensive oftentimes uh, more fundamentally diversifications spreading out a strategy works both ways lessening both the risk and the reward so this is where people start to say hey i'm diversified but this is this is horrible i'm shooting myself in the foot equities are are crushing it and i got like 30 percent of my portfolio in bonds which are doing nothing and again so that's that's the hard part because the diversification should be a strategy that over time will be most beneficial given the fact that at some point especially if you're saving for the long term like retirement there will be ups and downs so you would think that having a diversified portfolio would be good but in the good times you're going to be saying i want my money in 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 the equities where it's crushing it and in the bad times you would think i want my money in the safe place like bonds and so on so i i'm not you know losing money uh in in the system as they as the stocks go down but we can't guess those things right that's the point we don't really know what's going to happen so therefore we default to i just i know i don't know so i diversify <laughs> so so say you've invested 120,000 equivalent uh equally equally among six stocks and one stock doubles in value your original 20,000 stake uh is now worth 40,000 you've made a lot sure but not as much as if your entire 120,000 had been invested in that one company. So you you oftentimes when we see these gains we're like, well that's okay, but what if I had my whole 120,000 there? I'd be like way better off, right? But then you didn't know that that was going to go up like that, right? So by protecting you on the downside, diversification limits you on the upside, at least in the short term. Over the long term, diversification portfolios do tend to post higher returns. So pros and cons. So we got uh, pros, reduces portfolio risk, hedges against market volatility, offers higher returns long term. What are on the con side? Limits gains in the short term, time consuming to manage, incurs more transaction fees and commissions. Diversification and smart beta. Smart beta strategies offer diversification by tracking underlying indices, but uh, do not necessarily weigh stocks according to their market cap. ETF managers further screen equity issues on fundamentals and rebalance portfolios according to objective analysis and not just company size. While smart beta portfolios are uh, unmanaged, the primary goal becomes outperformance of the index itself. So now we get into this whole idea of how much management do should you be paying for, for example, and and sh or should you basically be reliant more on on the indexes which are trying to measure kind of market performance more in general using basically averages for example as of march 2019 the iShares edge msci usa quality factor etf holds 125 large and mid-cap us stocks by focusing on return on equity r 
ROE, debt to equity, DE ratio, and not solely market cap, the ETF has returned 90.49% uh, cumulatively since its inception in July 2013. A similar investment in the S&P 500 index grew by 66.33%. Real world example, Say an aggressive investor who can assume a higher level of risk wishes to construct a portfolio composed of Japanese equities, Australian bonds, and cotton futures. So he can purchase stakes in the iShares MSCI Japan ETF, the Vanguard Australian Government Bond Index ETF, and the iPath Bloomberg Cotton Sub, sub index total return the ETF, for example. With this mix of ETF shares, due to the specific qualifications of the targeted asset classes and the transparency of the holdings, the investor ensures true diversification in their holding. Also, with different uh, correlations or responses to outside forces among the securities, they can slightly lessen their risk exposure. For related reading, I uh, see the importance of diversification.